Hello and welcome back to this series. If you're now in video three, it means that you've managed to uh, get an introduction to NLP, natural language processing, and the CLTK or classical language toolkit, and you managed to install it in the last video. Hopefully everything went smoothly. If not, you let me know and I helped you. Uh, hopefully all that happened. But if you're here, it means that you've installed everything correctly, at least in theory, and we're about to find out if that's true. Uh, and we're going to now start working with the uh, the built-in corpus reader in CLTK. I'm going to show you in this video how to import uh, very corpora, various corpora, and how to actually kind of interact with them very rudimentarily so that you have the tools necessary to kind of do whatever you want with them. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be importing the uh, the CLTK corpus reader so that we can actually use the CLTK Corpus importer and download and install different libraries. So let's go ahead and jump right in. And I'm really lazy and I always have to for CLTK copy and paste uh, the, uh, the long from an import because I can never for the life of me remember the, this long CLTK.corpus.utils.importer. Uh, every time when I need to use it, I have to go back and recopy and paste it. So I'm going to do it right now so I don't embarrass myself. So once you do that, and I'll, I'll leave this in the description down below for you. Uh, we're going to do Corpus Importer. This is the Pythonic way to do it. It's how it's laid out in their documentation. What we're going to say is we're going to say Corpus Importer. And we're going to say for this video series, Latin. Because we're working with Latin texts. Were you to be working with Greek or Persian or Old Norse, you would change this to the corresponding language. That's going to be the only argument that we pass to Corpus Importer. The next thing you're going to do is to simply kind of see what your options are to import. So what you can do is you can say print Corpus Importer, and you can say list corpora, list underscore corpora. So list your corpuses, right? Print that off. And what you should get is an output that looks like this. It will be a list of all the different Latin texts that you can download. Now, I already have the Latin text Perseus, the Latin text Latin library installed. I'm going to go ahead and install, download, and automatically put in to my subfolder this bit right here, the Latin tree bank Perseus. I haven't really worked with that a lot, but we're going to go ahead and do it anyway. So we're going to say Latin uh, underscore, or sorry, corpus underscore importer. We're going to say dot import underscore corpus. And then we're going to pass in one argument. That argument is going to be the corpus that we want to install. Now, the 5.5 five and the 5.7 come with really particular formatting issues that you're going to actually have to address. So what we're going to do is we're going to be able to use this information to select what we want to install. In the last video, I showed you how to install the Latin underscore models underscore CLTK using this method. I'm going to walk you through it now at this point. So what we're going to say is we're going to say corpus, corpus underscore importer dot import corpus. And this is going to take one single argument. If you are going to want to install the model, you're going to do this. You're going to put that in there. And I'm going to get an error right now. Oh, I didn't because uh, it's already installed. Uh, sometimes you'll get an error. It'll say like permission denied if you've already got that model installed in your directory. Um, other times though, you won't get an error. I haven't figured it out myself. Uh, but if you're going to install a library that you don't have, you'll just copy and paste it in there. And in the background, it's downloading right now all of those files, all the corpuses, or corpora, sorry, uh, and it'll actually install them all. And then what you can do once they're installed is you can start actually interacting with them. And that's what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to comment this out. That's how you import and download a corpus. How do you actually interact with it? Well, you're going to simply say from cltk.corpus.readers, import git corpus uh, reader. And then what you're going to do is you're going to say Latin underscore corpus. And this is the Pythonic way to do it. It's how they tell you to do it in their documentation. We're going to say git corpus underscore reader. And we're going to pass in one argument right now. We're going to say corpus name. And that's going to be the name of the, uh, the library that we want to import. So let's do Latin text Perseus. Latin underscore text per underscore Perseus. And we're going to pass in a second argument. And that's going to be language. So this is in Latin. 
this is going to allow us now to call that object. If we're to print it off right now, Latin corpus, you're going to get an output that looks like this. Generator. Okay, what I'm going to show you now is how to actually use this. So within this uh, generator, you've got a whole bunch of different information, right? You've got uh, all the different documents, all the different sentences, all the different paragraphs, all kind of stored in that generator. So what we're going to do is we're going to work with that generator. So we're going to say sense, so sentences, is going to be equal to list, and we're going to say Latin corpus dot sense. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, because this is a list, I'm going to index it just for simplicity's sake. And we're going to do it like that. And then we're going to print off sense. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to call every single sentence from that list, create it as an object. And then what we're going to be able to do is just kind of print off the first 10 here. So as you can see, we've got a few different Latin sentences. This is coming from the first few sentences in the, uh, the Latin uh, Perseus corpus. So we can just, you know, let's make it a little more legible for send and sends, print, send. There we go. And we can actually kind of iterate through that list. And if you notice, it takes a little bit of time to load. And that's because this is a lot of data being passed right now. It's an entire corpus, but there you go. And you'll see that y you got something that looks a little sloppy. And in the next few videos, I'm going to show you how to take Latin texts and use the built-in CLTK uh, methods for standardizing and preparing that data for NLP or natural language processing. One of the main arguments that you're gonna hear me say over the next few videos is that the most important step to performing natural language processing is cleaning and standardizing your data. If you don't do those steps, you are going to have flawed and inconsistent results. Take the time early on and learn how to clean and standardize your data well, and you'll find that your experience with NLP is going to be a lot happier. That's going to be it for this video, though. Hopefully, by the end of this video, you've now learned how to download uh, various corpora, how to download and install the CLTK models, and how to kind of interact with them on a very basic level. For further exploration, let me know if you want me to make a video on it, but the documentation here is pretty good. I'll go through and experiment with it. Uh, if you have any questions, leave me a comment down below. Uh, thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe.